Well folks, how are we doing? Um, I'm about to get stuck into this uh, project in a slightly more serious way. I'm kind of still in the process of sourcing a lot of parts, but um, at this point in time, uh, one major part has already arrived, so uh, no time like the present to get stuck in. I have decided, instead of trying to source a good second-hand turbo and not knowing what the condition of it is, I'm going to rebuild the turbo that's in it. Um, so, what I bought was a CHRA, or Centre Housing and Rotational Assembly. That basically means that I'm buying all the rotating bits and the bearing housing all pre-assembled and balanced and everything, uh, ready to refit to the existing housings. So that would be the turbine plenum and the uh, compressor shroud. So, um, I'll show you what that, uh, what that consists of now. So, it came very well packaged, I actually bought it on eBay, and um, my garage is absolutely upside down, but uh, it's another day's work to uh, sort that out. So, um, let's take this out, I actually already opened it. Uh, one of the nice things it comes with is a, um, a balancing report. So as a graph, just to tell you what the vibrations were um, at specific RPM, they spin it up to 150,000 RPM. It seems insanely fast, but you have to remember that this is basically a um, the makings of a small turbine engine. You've got a compressor and you've got a turbine. It just so happens that the combustion section is the uh, diesel engine in this instance, whereas it would be a separate combustor in a gas turbine engine. But uh, it compresses the air, you increase the, uh, incre increase the compression, add your fuel, you burn the fuel, and the uh, turbine extracts the uh, heat from that, or extracts the energy from that heat and turns it into kinetic energy, turns the shaft, which turns the compressor. So that's the principles of a turbine engine, and it's also the principles of a turbo. So uh, this is very small, obviously, you know, I mean, turbine engines are a hell of a lot bigger than this, uh, for the most part. Uh, so um, this is basically the bare rotating assembly with the oil ports. That part there is the compressor, or sorry, the turbine, and that part there is the compressor. So um, it spins it in, uh, in around 150,000 RPM, as I said, and um, that's all uh, ready to go. So what we'll do is um, I'm going to put this back in its box, and we're going to take the uh, old turbo off the um, off the engine, and I will show you what the damage is as well too, and I'll show you how I remove it. I suppose now is as good a time as any to introduce you to the engine in question. This is a 1.9 TDI uh, Volkswagen AHU engine which puts out a whopping 90 horsepower but they're a very durable, uh, reliable engine and they can be uh, mapped for uh, more performance as well too in the future if I decide to do that. It has an ECU, there's a box load of wiring and associated paraphernalia uh, in there but um, Unfortunately, at this moment in time, in the, at the, geez, I can't talk. At this moment in time, we're looking at the wrong side of the engine. In here, you can see what we have is uh, we have our injection pump there, which is which is a mechanical injection pump, but electronically controlled. Unlike the engine that's currently in the van, which is a purely mechanical injection pump, and the only electrical connection is a fuel cutoff solenoid. The alternator there. There's a uh, vacuum pump there for the brake booster. There is a, a, a oil water heat exchanger, oil filter. You have a power steering pump down there, which will be going because this van is not going to be getting power steering. And if it ever does, it will take the form of electrical electrical power steering. And um, yeah, so that's basically this side of the engine. That's the, uh, the it's a single overhead cam eight valve engine. Um, and uh, what we what I've done is I've taken off the clutch already. The clutch was actually badly worn out, but um, that doesn't matter because uh, this this engine will be getting a uh, dual mass flywheel. This is a single mass flywheel. A dual mass flywheel basically means that you have um, uh, two parts of the flywheel. One part is acting on the engine. The other part is acting on the gearbox. And um, there are damping springs between the two halves and the clutch is in between those two halves. So it uh, absorbs the um, forces uh, or the vibration forces in the engine uh, before they go into the gearbox, which basically means that the engine doesn't act like an impact gun on the gearbox and shred the gearbox. Um, these modern, more modern TDI engines, um, the torque is a lot more, a lot higher low down the uh, RPM range. Um, 
I say this as if I know what I'm talking about. I'm only kind of learning all, the, all about this stuff myself at the moment. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll try and take the flywheel off as well too because that does need to come off. Um, but uh, that's going to take some doing, taking those bolts out. I'll try the impact gun and see how I get on. But I think I'll have to lock that flywheel and just use a breaker bar to crack them. So um, anyway, let's, get the tur let, let's uh, pivot the engine around and get at the turbo. Okay, so I managed to swivel the engine around and here is the offending article. So this is the turbine side of the turbo um, and this is the compressor side of the turbo. Air comes in here and comes up here and in through an intercooler and cools the air and it goes into the intake. The reason the air gets cooled is because co colder air is denser air and the more oxygen you have in the air, um, the more bang for the buck you get basically. But uh, if you see in here, there is where the turbine is, or the compressor is, and unfortunately this turbo has eaten something. Now there's a little bit of damage to the uh, compressor shroud as well too, so we'll have to dress that up. But my main concern is the fact that the compressor impeller itself is in bits, so uh, we need to uh, we need to address that, and that's why I got the new CHRA. But in order to remove this turbo, I need to remove one of my favourite clamps, which are these bloody things here. And if you've seen in previous videos, VW love using these things. Um, and we have to remove the oil feed and the oil return down the bottom. And um, then there is two uh, bolts there. Uh, they're multi-hex, 12 point. I'm hoping I have the right size socket and 12 point for them. And there is a nut on the far side. I, my heart sank when I saw the access at the back and I was thinking, please don't tell me I have to take the intake manifold in order to get at it. But no, fortunately there's a nut facing down on that side. So it's not too bad. So anyway, first I'm going to take off the, um, the uh, oil feed and return pipes and I'm going to take off that inlet pipe. And we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the turbo out on the bench now. Um, and just a, a bit of disassembling to do. So first of all we need to do is take off this exhaust uh, section and flange here and um, then we can set about taking the CHRA out of the, in uh, out of the turbo uh, or taking the parts off the CHRA really should I say more accurately and um, that includes taking pipe unions off and um, the uh, that's the compressor shroud and the turbine plenum is there um, to be honest with you, they may call them different things in turbo circles, but these, is what, these are what we uh, call them in uh, jet engine circles, so they're the names I'm going with. So, um, yeah, so basically, first of all, what I need to do is I need to get the turbo in my uh, bench vise over here and uh, get, those, uh, get those four fairly rusty looking uh, nuts off. Now, uh, I have my old trusty friend, the uh, gas torch there, um, and I have a funny feeling I may be uh, needing it. Um, but uh, some judicious use of WD-40, uh, not the best penetrating oil in the world, but it's what I have, so that's what I'll be using. Um, but uh, we'll see how we get on anyway, and um, then we'll set about taking the, uh, what we have to do is take, there's a set of uh, bolts around there, there's four bolts, they come out of the turbine plenum, and um, then the compressor housing has... Uh, more bolts around there as well too so they come off and then that leaves you with basically the center housing with the back plate for the compressor as well too i suppose it'll be uh, the um shroud support um that's the name we'll go with so uh yeah anyway so that's uh that's the next on the plan okay so uh, that came off um using uh, all the yoga doggers from this um, quite like that uh, tool actually um, already and I've only just kind of started using it um, I think it would benefit from a 5 amp hour battery so I may be investing in one of them though um, but anyway I, I think I might need to keep this because uh, it may need to be incorporated into the existing van exhaust because that is a completely different flange for the turbo that's the the, uh, the exit or the exducer from the turbine in there and uh, that's the wastegate then as well too so that little valve pops open and there uh, allows the compressor air to come out from there um, so yeah so that's uh, next um, uh, next on the agenda then is to uh, take out uh, four bolts around here and take out that that and then the two corresponding ones on the other side and we get that oil pipe out of the way as well too so that is just a uh, uh, allen keys so let's do that 
Okay, so I have the uh, compressor shroud off now, and there it is there, and you can see that the uh, damage is basically limited to just the uh, inlet there. So uh, around this edge here, um, that should all dress up uh, any of that kind of damage there. I'd say that'll look pretty, uh, pretty good by the time I've gone around with some very light emery, um, just to take the rough look off it. Um, but uh, interestingly enough as well too, it's also full of oil. So that would say to me that one of the, the seals in this uh, turbo was gone as well too. So um, just as well we're doing this job because even if this turbo hadn't eaten something, which it certainly has as you can see by the um, the blades, um, it would still be uh, giving rise to a smoky engine that's consuming oil. And um, that, just won't, that just wouldn't do in the context of a uh, freshly uh, installed engine. So um, yeah, the next thing to do is to take the turbine plenum off and then we'll get everything cleaned up and um, start putting it all back together again. Okay, so here's the turbine plenum removed now as well too. You see there's no veins or anything like that in there, so uh, literally um, the gases that come from the exhaust go directly onto the, um, the size of the turbine. Um, doesn't make, it for, make for a very efficient turbine, but uh, serves the purpose that it needs to serve in this instance. So uh, it's fairly uh, grubby looking, but uh, more interestingly actually as well too, the wastegate was stuck closed. So um, it's still very, very stiff. So the uh, wastegate actuator is just vacuum operated and um, it uh, needs to be able to operate quite freely. And if it doesn't, you're just going to end up uh, overspooling the turbo and um, causing its destruction, which is maybe the reason why this one is in bits. Um, but uh, be that as it may, anyway, we have the technology, we can rebuild it. Um, and uh, we'll get it, uh, get it back to live uh, to fight another day. Um, I wouldn't consider the engine particularly overstressed, so uh, I'm not particularly worried about the engine taking too much boost pressure off the turbo. In fairness, it's not a massive turbo anyway, and uh, at 90 horsepower, um, you know, it's really not a very, very powerful engine to begin with. So we're not going to stress ourselves too much with that. Um, but uh, yeah, I would. I would reckon that that sucked something in though, I mean, what exactly, I don't know, uh, where it went, I don't know either, but, you know, the fact that it, it kind of did, um, you know, it, it didn't even get down as far as the kind of the, the um, mid-span blades there as well too, it's, uh, it's kind of, I'd say it's probably safe enough, whatever it was was quite small, I mean, you have to remember that this is spinning incredibly fast, and um, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's probably, uh, nothing to worry about in that instance I mean what we can do is we could have a look down the uh, the inlet of the engine and have a look at the back of the uh, valves and see if there's anything there but you know I mean it's probably a bit over the top uh, so uh, yeah anyway right so next, next step is to get all this lock cleaned up um, and to find that uh, bolt I lost it went flying across the bench when the turbine plenum came off and uh, I don't know where it's gone so I'll have to find that but um what I think I might do just before we wrap up is I might just try and take that flywheel off as well too. So let's leave the turbo for the moment and go to the flywheel. That's not a flywheel. This is a flywheel. Probably the worst Australian accent ever, but uh, there you go. Yeah, the old lister. That's a beast of a flywheel and weighs a ton. But anyway, suffice it to say, I got the flywheel off the uh, Volkswagen engine. And um, when you have an impact gun, handy job but if you didn't have an impact gun it'd be a pain in the face and you'd need to figure out a way of bracing the um the engine uh, the flywheel on the engine to stop it from turning as you're trying to use a breaker bar to take it off so that uh, ryobi impact gun is paying dividends already and it uh, made short work of taking out those six bolts holding that in so uh yeah i'm uh, suitably impressed but um anyway i think we'll uh, call it there for an evening um i'm gonna bring the few bits in to get uh, cleaned from the turbo and um, we'll uh, reassess the situation then and we can start putting it all back together again and ready to and have it ready to fit to the engine. Now the plan with this engine is I want to uh, get everything assembled on the um, on the bench uh, before I put it uh, uh, put it into the into the van so uh, that basically means have the engine running on the garage floor with the gearbox attached. There's the gearbox. <laughs> so um it's quite a bit bigger than the Beatles gearbox, which um, 
I had out there as well too recently, but um, that is out of a B5 Passat um, 1.9 uh, TDI. Um, and uh, what I need to get done is I need to get a um, 15 millimeters machine from the front face of the bell housing to make room for the spacer that goes onto it. So uh, that should be um, should be interesting trying to get that done. I, um, I'm kind of coming up short on people who actually want to do the job for me so far, but uh, I'm still only at the early stages of uh, of uh, searching around. I certainly can't do it anyway. But um, yeah, anyway, we'll leave it there. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.